Hey there, Jacksons. Um, welcome to Legends Live. It looks like um, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties with Stephen Howard, but we'll get him fixed. So welcome to all of our viewers. You are watching Legends Live presented by the National Basketball Retired Players Association, the official home of WNBA and NBA legends. And today is a very special day as we talk about passing the game. And we have a really great father-son duo here from professional basketball. Uh, we have NBA champion and NBA legend Jaron Jackson Sr. And then we have current Memphis Grizzlies, uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. So, hey guys, how are you doing? Great, great. How are you doing? It's, it's good to see you guys. Yeah, you too. Um, I'm going to see if we can get Stephen Howard back. Hey, Stephen, can you unmute yourself? Hear me now? There, there you go. go. There we All go. All right. I, I channeled it a little bit of my um, my mom's uh, technical difficultiness with all the times I try to, you know, FaceTime her and, and I just became my mom for a second. So, yeah, that was really awesome. Um, so yeah, so we got the the Jacksons here, one of NBA's favorite father and son duos. We got Jaron Jackson Sr., Jaron Jackson Jr. How how are we doing during this quarantine and pandemic and the the, the new normal? How are we doing? Oh, we are we are trying to uh, uh, hang out or hang in. You might say uh, it's it's. It's been tough, but it's been pretty good to spend a lot of time with, with the family and, and for us to kind of be together. That's been kind of cool, too. As you know, Steve, when you're playing ball, you're kind of traveling all over the place and you lose those little moments where you're not spending a time with your own kids. But now hey, we, we're kind of forced to hang out and hang in in the house. So it's been in that sense, it's been good. But everybody's itching for basketball. So that's kind of a bummer. So we'll see. I saw the way um, Junior looked at looked at you, kind of like, man, Pops is getting on my last nerve. How's it going with you being around, you know, Pops and and the whole family? Yeah, no, I, like you said, we've been we've been around each other so much. It feels like I'm in grade school. So, <laughs> you know, I'll be I'll go back and forth to my 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 place and, and their place. So I get a little break sometimes, but for the most part, I'll be I'll be kicking it with them, and uh, it's been fun though. I mean. We get a lot, a lot accomplished as a family. We play a lot of card games. We play. We watch a lot of like old games. We watch a lot of my games. We watch just, you know, me and my dad watch a lot of basketball. So that's been fun. Okay, so where are you guys located right now? So we are, we are in Memphis right now. Okay, we're, you're in Memphis. Okay, yeah, we're, yeah, we're in Memphis. So yeah. uh, we're kind of. I'm we're at, not going anywhere. It's his house. His house right. in Memphis. His house. So yeah. Okay. So yeah. So so my son has his own place. Uh, but you know, he feels like hanging I can out with come, us. I'll done. come kick it, might as well, you know. <laughs> when, he, when he wants to eat well, we know where he goes. <laughs> yeah, eat free. Yes, yeah, so he comes oh, out he comes out and hang out with uh hang out with mom, hang out with grandma and uh grandmama, I right. better say that, yes. Uh and uh <laughs> and we all get a you get a chance to kind of smile and have a good time, man. Oh, you got to think of all the little old games you used to play when you were a kid. To, trying to occupy yourself while you're in the house. At the same time, find a way to make the house spick and span clean. You know, <laughs> when, you, when you guys are playing cards, who, who how does that go with two ultra competitive, you know, guys, senior and junior? Who 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 lets the competition get too much? of themselves and just like loses themselves which one of you is that i mean i, I hear it's just like some people like there's i there's always rules and cards and sometimes you know people can tend to forget the rules and go off oh and, and if i call if i'm calling you out on your you're not following the rules and everybody wants to get all no and, and then there's yelling and stuff like that it's not just us though it's my mom it's my grandma so they're both they're yeah. both super competitive too like it it you definitely talk a lot of trash. We talk trash, man. You know, you talk just like any other game. So you imagine playing cards, playing the old games from back in the day, spades or whatever. But we are famous for our uh, – my son introduced the presidents to us. Uh, oh, nice. Kind of like Uno, 
you know, yeah. it's a fun little game, man. And uh, we've been kind of, you know, occupying our time for sure playing those games and we'll play that we'll put on a movie put on netflix put on I mean, like, binge watching whatever. netflix stuff uh watching cnn everybody's watching cnn so it's uh um you gotta find a way to occupy your time and sometimes it's it's tough sometimes so how, do, how, do we, how do we differentiate each other in the house is it pops and junior or, or you know how does that work out i mean shoot you can just in the past, you could just tell by tone of voice. Usually, it's like in terms of someone calling us. Yeah, like how like how do they refer to you guys um, in, in the house? Is it? I mean, usually neither of us answer, so we don't. Oh. One of oh, both. Of we us. don't want to answer. We're just like, right. all right, if you really, like, if it was really important, you'll you'll come say it. You'll say the whole name, or you'll say Junior, or you'll say, like, if I don't hear a Junior, I'm not responding. Unless like. It's on him then. Oh, uh, you, uh, you say, uh, um, let's see, in this house, let me see. Uh, so we're, he's Jay Jr. And I'm just, I'm Jay. Okay. I'm Jay. So, uh, but talking to each other, I, I would call him Jay. He would call me uh, Pops or or my, my new nickname, which is Chief. I just want to uh, nah, put it out there. Yeah, yeah so. Chief right here. Man. Chief, you know, uh, chief, uh, it's a. <laughs> You know, so oh, so is that is that like Kobe when he you know kind of named himself Black Mom Black Mamba? You just created you know your new name, Chief. He's been Chief since I was like ten. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's oh. been Chief to me and my friends. Like everybody, just like it's like who that? I mean, that's Chief. Chief, you know, so Chief's coaching. Chief. <laughs> so you know, as a, as a as a as a, uh, a grassroots coach, been at the when he was at high school, and now, and when I see all these younger players. They refer to me as not only as coach, but I, I have fun with it. They can call me chief. And so right. uh, uh, it's kind of stuck with me. So now I got family members calling me that and at times. So I have a lot of fun with it, man. So it's uh, it's kind of cool. So now, I mean, I got people who don't know me or maybe they've heard something. Instead of calling me Jaron, like, what's up, chief? I'm like, chief. Very so nice. I've added – uh, I've added that to everything now. I even let him know when he's playing. I'm like, shoot that ball, chief. So now it's kind of, it's kind of sticking. So uh, we we have a lot of fun with. So much respect to uh, Native Americans and the Kansas City Chiefs, the champs. But my God, I don't mind I'm being even, chief. I'm not even going that far. It's What's not, up, chief? It ain't all that. But come on, it, chief. <laughs> so, so so Jay, you you grew up in uh, New Orleans. Uh, what ward are you from? My mom. From the ninth ward, I mean the seventh ward. Sorry, we get the wards mixed. That's all right. Um, twelfth ward. Okay. Twelfth ward. Okay. So we got, uh, I miss home, man. Uh, I always talk about it here in the household, and I, I'm, 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 I'm so. Uh, I, I try to keep up with all my folks down there to see how they're doing, and uh, I hope the best for them because I know that was somewhat of a hot spot uh, in, yeah. in, in, at this moment. And I think uh, things are getting better. Like like everywhere else, things are getting better. But that was hot spot. So I think about them a lot. You know, uh, um, hope the, hope your folks are doing well down there, man. Um, well, no, well, well, my parents are in in in, in Dallas. Uh, my mom told my dad, you know, hey, we can live anywhere but New Orleans. Um, so <laughs> you know how that that is. Love to visit, but you know, living there is different. Now, speaking of home and growing up in New Orleans, how did you get introduced to to basketball, senior? Oh man. oh man, we've been. Ooh, I have a large family full of ball players, man. So it was kind of the thing to do back in the day, playing uh, playing ball. So I mean, I, I played that since I was, uh, since I can remember. I mean, uh, but it was back in the day. It was instead of the little basketball goals that you go and purchase for your kid, put in the driveway. No, it was old school. It was the uh, the bike, the bicycle rim. And you right. take folks out, nail it up on a tree, and that's the hoop. And you you never had any nets, you know. You had that type of uh, atmosphere when when I was little. So I think those are some of the stories that I got to continue to tell my son about how it was. You know, these these young kids got blessed to have your typical nice basketball goal in the driveway. I didn't have yeah. a way. 
<laughs> the driveway is out. All right, we played on the street, you know. Yeah. So we had to let the cars go by before you, uh, you know, take the next shot. So it was it was cool. But I mean, I played since I, since I was a baby. My whole family, all my older brothers, they played. So um, and that was just the beginning, man. So basketball was kind of in our family. So playing in the NBA, then you have a son. So obviously there's going to be a lot of pressure of having a fun son following your footsteps. And then there's going to be the comparisons. That's always going to be there for people. So how did you introduce Jaron Jr. to basketball? And how did you keep it fun without all that pressure and comparisons um, that come with being the son of an NBA great? That's a, that's, that's a good comment, man. I, I always wanted to make – uh, when, when introducing the game to Jaron Jr., uh, that he enjoys it and plays and have fun with it. And, you know, as you get older, the, the further along you go in the game, the harder it gets, you know, more competitive it is, more pressure. Absolutely. Right? So it's no longer the innocent game that you played when you were a kid. And so uh, I wanted – I'd say that to this day, for him to have fun playing uh, even when he's uh, in the pressure situations. But, I mean – what do you do, Junior? Just uh, to have fun with the game. Uh, um, I try to just. See I mean, I just like. I just. I, mean, I like it anyway. Like I, I was fortunate enough to 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 love it on my own. So there was there wasn't any like problems. Like, I didn't really. I mean, I didn't I, force I, it I on really, you. I mean, I didn't force it on me. I I tried a bunch of weird sports before I tried or while I was doing basketball, I was doing a bunch of stuff like during. So like I didn't probably stick to just basketball until like middle school and then like then I, it was just basketball because i loved it more than everything else but no i was i mean i, I was pretty much chilling it there i didn't really have that much pressure from him it was probably pressure from like others to be great but yeah I mean, at the end of the day i want to be great too so everybody's <laughs> kind of on the same type of time like i'm, I'm not worried about pressure because i mean i want to be great just as badly as other people want to see me be great so mm-hmm. It's cool. So, 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 Junior, w- when did you learn that your dad was a big deal? When, when was that? And, and, and what did that feel like? Uh, I knew in like grade school, just because, like, I mean, everybody wanted it. Like, I, I wouldn't tell, I wouldn't, I would change sc- schools pretty often, not like very often, but like enough where, I mean, if I got to a new school, I, I wouldn't tell anybody my dad played like basketball because everybody was just going to be like, oh my God, like, you know, everybody got something to say. And then everybody want to come up, come over to the house because the house is big. So <laughs> stuff, stuff like that, like I just knew, like I kind of had those good snacks. Yeah, like I, I I never I never resented resented that. Sometimes I was like, man, dude, like everybody love you. Like I think I thought that like once or twice early on because everybody loves like, everybody loves Chief, man. Everybody whatever. But no, nah, it that faded after grade school, and then it, it was just it was just whatever. <laughs> I didn't love him. I didn't love him in college. I'll just throw that out there right now because, you know, he, he played. There was not nothing to love when, when he was with the, the Hoya Paranoia. Um, but it was a still, was a you know, respect, though. It was a lot of respect because, you know. It, you know, see, that, that was the days when uh, I think uh, the Hoyas and uh, and the Blue Demons, well, we were strong, man. It was, the teams were they were very good, man. So no no disrespect to the squads this, this, these days, these days. But, you know, uh, we we were, it was that was the good old days, man. When college ball was just incredible, and I try to share that a little bit with him. Although, you know, he he can throw Michigan State in my face, you know, right. you're there and how well they played. He can throw that in my face a little bit, but I can sit here and tell you, um, come we're, on, we're, man. we're just, I mean, come on, I was squad, my squad at uh, they're grimy, at Georgetown. They're, they're grimy, y'all. Are hey, grimy. check this out. Check this out. <laughs> Myself. Alonzo Mourning, Matumbo. Now you met those guys already, right? Yeah, imagine old. that they're old. Yeah, they're old now, of course. But uh, imagine those guys. I'm on a team with them, with my man Charles Smith, the point guard. No, it's and a I good, had my it's homeboy a, Dwayne a, Brown. It's a good. It's a. <laughs> it's, a good <laughs> it's a good. It's a good. It's a good team against Michigan State. Yeah, y'all just wouldn't win against Miles Bridges and the crew. We were just out telling you. No way. Come on, man. Joe Thomas Michigan State. You would just you'd have to play so hard, man. It'd be your it'd be your championship game. I, I'll tell you this. I wouldn't have to guard you. Don't matter. 
Well, uh, we, you know, you, you're bringing up something interesting, though, because um, senior, you, you played at Georgetown, like you mentioned, when it, they were at its apex. And for me, you played on the iconic Georgetown team. You just missed playing with, with Ewan by one year. But like mm -hmm. you said, you played with uh, Morning, Matumbo, um, uh, Gateway, you know, Williams. Yeah. And, yeah. and those teams were super yeah. talented. And, and for me, like that was that cross-sectional of when basketball, sports, and culture was kind of intersecting and music became a huge part of it. And so you guys, to me, were kind of like, and I wanted to go to Georgetown. I think any African-American kid at that time for what Georgetown stood for wanted to go there. You, would, you had Big John on the sidelines. And so you guys, to me, were like public enemy. Like, you know, y'all didn't take it from anybody. Y'all were dishing it. How did you get, you know, your son to, you know, did you ever um, – kind of teach him that kind of mix between music and and sports and like you know I know you're a big EPMD fan so <laughs> so like how did you uh you know like what was on your playlist back then and how did you get him to understand like that relation between music and how it fuels athletes and that kind of relationship between the well, two you know Steve I, I, not only did I do it in the past but even to this day I want him to appreciate you know old school hip hop or some uh some some R and B. Yeah, he gets in my he gets on me, you know, when I bring up EPMD or Gangstar and uh uh you know Rakim yeah. all legends man back in the day that we got that was our pregame hype. That was my playlist on I don't know if we had the little earbuds. They got the earbuds now but uh what did we have like little cushion headsets? Yeah them? oh yeah it was cushion it it, it oh, was yeah. not a noise canceling at all. You heard all the other noise. But all of those different groups were part of that time in which uh, it resonated with, believe it or not, Georgetown basketball. You know, um, I think um, it just made, that's what made, made Georgetown so great. And uh, I tried to share those stories with him, you know, and, you know, he's trying to establish his own path with music. It ain't, I don't it know ain't, what his that, music that stuff that is. Okay, so, 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 Junior, what, what's on your playlist now? Like, what, what do you rock to pregame? Shoot, I mean, I, I listen to, I listen to, I listen to Gunna, I listen to Gunna, like Gunna. Lil Baby, Young Thug, Lil Key, like a lot of Atlanta, Atlanta stuff. Pre-game, we, we were playing, uh, you know, Rest His Soul, Pop Smoke. We play Pop Smoke probably before every game this year. Like, we were playing that, NBA Young Boy a lot. Um, yeah, man, I don't play like I mean I, I respect all old rap. I think that's that's dope. Like it paved the way for what we got now. And and the same with like players, like it, it goes hand in hand with uh athletes and the league and stuff like that. No biggie in it, Tupac? No, like I'm not putting that on. Like I'm just, I, they're great and all that, but like you know, for what so you don't have any old school mix into your new school playlist, you know, before you uh playing none of that i got like some some kanye some jay-z like i like i like their stuff i think their stuff is popping i like okay. lil wayne like i listen to a lot of lil wayne lil wayne lil wayne's okay dope. but um <laughs> i mean nah i mean i i mean i'm born in 99 so to you, got, me, you got you got any r and b in your system nah i don't i mean it's cool i listen to that if i'm like around girls or whatever <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's just you know R and B is like if, like Drake or something. So Drake, all right, cool. We'll, we'll roll with I Drake. Guess. We both we can meet halfway on Drake. Right. So he raps and he sings. He got a little you know hip hop. Or I'm, I'm with. Him. Yeah, uh, he's got he's got a little baby face to him occasionally. A little little, little uh, feel. Trippy Red is. Yeah. All right, we're good. <laughs> All right, all right, we're good. I'm okay with that. I'm okay now. Okay, we uh, the Scott Rochelle wants to see that bling, that championship ring. Is that it on your um, oh, on your yeah. right hand? Bling, bling. You know, I, I, I man, you doing curls with that? Your right bicep must be much larger than your left. Look, man. You know what? Well, see, I make sure I keep it on just to remind him. You know, I, yeah. When he's when he's either by himself or when he's working out, even now when he's doing dribbling, ball handling drills or on the treadmill. I put this in his face. There's this. There's nothing to say. Just yeah. all this and this motivation enough. Mm. Nice. Uh, we just missed playing together with the the Spurs by one year. I was there before they drafted Tim Tim Duncan. I was on the team that helped them to get 
Tim Duncan just because they just lost so many games. You're on a team with Rodman? No, 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 no. Um, uh, right before they drafted Tim Duncan, so with David Robinson, but you know yeah, okay. when they had like Dominique and all of them. Um, Much love so, to the Spurs, man. You know. Uh, oh yeah, great organization. Great organization, man. We we had some battles against your old Jazz, man. So, oh yeah, great yes, one, man. So I got to tell him all about this type of stuff, man. He won't. There's so many games and so many stories, and he but he's establishing his own thing now, Steve. Yeah. yeah. So. Jay, so when you played, you had that, you know, 13-year career. You went undrafted like myself. You had to have a really a special type of mentality to be successful as an undrafted free agent and to have such a long career like you did. How did you instill that work ethic, that kind of grinding mentality? Because your son, lottery pick, fourth pick, you know, he's got a different path. So how do you, you know, how did you instill that kind of grinding mentality into your son, you know, in order to have that – you know, long career like you did. Yeah, I mean, you know, I continue to remind him even to this day uh, that although he's a, a talented player that got picked, you know, high pick, that there are a lot of players like myself and, and like yourself, the guys that are were on that path, that journey, that that journeyman that's trying to establish a basketball career. These guys yeah. are hungry. These guys are determined. They didn't get picked, but they can play, and they are coming after you. And not just the top guys. There are guys. Yeah. Where, these are the guys that you see in training camp. These are the guys that you run into. You didn't hear about. Perhaps they came from a small school, or perhaps they were. You know, these guys didn't play as much as they would have liked in college, and they're hungry. These guys are going after you. So I, I, I let him know that that's, you know, respect those guys as well. And he's. He, he gets the message. He understands that. He values every guy, the superstar player on the team, all the way down to the 12th man on the team. So, so Junior, did, did Pops bring out any of his old, you know, Hoya, Hoya tapes to show you when you were growing up? Yeah, some. I saw a bunch of those. And then I mainly like the NBA games or what we watch now because, I mean, I mean, they're better. The Spurs, like the Spurs specifically, they were just better. We were watching better, you know, better basketball. I think in college it was more efficient to watch college hoops or old college hoops. But now, like, I'm in the NBA. It's, it's cool to watch the old NBA games. It's interesting. Uh, little things are really different. It's, 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 it's funny. It's funny to watch. What's I different? Know, like, what's different from back? Yeah, what, what's, the, what's the difference? Oh, like, what's the difference between the errors? All, uh, what's that? Y'all like crab dribble up the court. Y'all don't just dribble up the court. Y'all like, you know, y'all like turn your back to the defender all the way up the court. Like, will we I, carry I the ball? Oh, you no, know what I'm yourself. saying? Y'all like, y'all. Well, that, hey, that's because they could hand check. And so you'd have guys like Derek Harper that would literally push you the way he wanted you to go. So yeah. you had to back up. Oh, there's no, I don't really see that now. Like, a, like a, it almost looks like y'all are posting up all the way down the court. But yeah, right. <laughs> like, I've seen Isaiah, even a great, Handlers Isaiah Thomas, they they would turn her back to their defender before they even get across half court. I, I just thought that was so funny. You don't see that now. Like, I mean, there's not as much pressing now. And even if even if there is, it's I mean, you it's one say, move. I'm, I'm going by you. If you touch me, it's you're going to call for a foul. Like, you can't can't really you know. Are you limits. saying? Are you saying there's uh, there's no defense in today's ball? Is that what you're trying to say? No, not at all. I think there's defense. It's just. I think people people just want to score more. I just people just want to be scorers. Like I just feel like everybody wants to come in and score. So mm-hmm. sometimes defense can <laughs> slip your mind a little bit more these days because you know, I mean, everybody wants to score. I want to score. You want to score? Yeah, I definitely want you to score. Shoot, everybody wants to score, man. Like it is what it is. But you got to play defense. I like- you got hey, to play defense to win those championships. Like you know that big ring on 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 his finger. Yeah. And to get some playing time. Look, I'm a journey. Yeah. I'm trying to get this playing time. To get that, you got to play some defense. Mm. So what what are some other differences like the um branding cuz I you know like like they were talking about before with the NBA cares being different. Branding was a little bit different, you know, when 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 we played. Now it's I mean, you got guys with their social media presence. Talk a little bit about the difference in branding for you gotta, for You got to just embrace like everything that comes with like the position you're in. Like, I mean, not everybody gets to 
play basketball at a high level. And now that everything's everything's on everything's on a phone. So like I mean, from social media to speaking out on things, from the from the good it can do, it can do just as much bad if you don't handle it right. But if you're handling it right, you're handling your business, you can build your brand and build who you want to be known as and do a lot of things that can prepare yourself for like even when you retire and having an outlet to do other things. And, you know, little by little, you just find more interest and you're letting you're letting like it creates a lot of fan dialogue, a lot of good fan involvement. It gives them an outlook on, you know, what other things you're doing, like what you're doing at home, how you relate to them a little bit more because they only see you on the court. So it's just it's all it's all fun. I, I, I'm in that generation. So it's easy for me to say that it's just kind of all I know. Like, I mean, I probably had an Instagram since it came out in like middle, like sixth grade, fifth grade. Maybe I probably have the same Instagram since then. What, so, ha- what happened? To, what happened? To, uh, Snapchat. I still have that. You got that? Face- you know, Facebook. See, look, you don't even look. Uh, look, you don't uh, know where I'm coming from. All I got is I got Twitter. Exactly. Uh, you don't need anything else. He is nothing for look. No disrespect. All y'all, it's okay. I'm <laughs> you know, keep stay on uh, Twitter. I got Twitter too, but like you know, I don't, I can't get Instagram. I mean, you can. This is new. Like, you got some other stuff that's out, man. <laughs> um, you got to help me with that, June. Nah, he's okay. We ain't got nothing to post. So how how was your how did your dad help you with all those things like the branding and the different things that you're gonna experience when you get to the NBA? Like how did that experience that he had help you? I mean, he just keeps me focused on what's really important, which is working on your game, being focused, learning, being a student of the game, uh, being grateful for like everybody who came before me, and know that you know basketball at the end of the day is what we're here what we're put on this planet to do. So, you know, it just keep, keeps me focused on basketball and that's that's the most important thing. And yeah. I, I, you know what? Uh, basketball. Part of me, as uh, as he describes as uh, I'm kind of old school, you know, uh, when, when it comes to this, uh, this this social media or this internet stage, I'm not that old school. I would I would love to him to be, make sure he be he's careful with it as well. Yeah. Understand how to uh, manage his social media. What you right? He mentioned what he says and what he shouldn't say, um, and he's done a great job with that. He understands it, and I think it's a uh, it's a lot of positives to it. Uh, reaching out to his fans and having people following him, I just think that's great. And you can communicate with people. So I'm learning more and more, and I appreciate it. And I know he's doing the same. So as long as he's got a good head on his shoulder, so he, he'll. He'll be fine, no matter Instagram, Twitter. He's fine with it. So, Junior, was there one thing that your dad told you as far as like, look, this is what you need to expect when you get to the NBA. That one day you were playing or you're in practice or something, and like it came true, and you're like, man, Pop said this was gonna happen, and it happened. Did did anything like that happen your first year? Um, shoot. I think, I mean, he just had such confidence in what I was going to do. He just, he just, he knew I was going to, you know, prove myself to my teammates and my organization that I can be a staple on the team. So I think any nerves that I had were just me, like, not knowing what was about to happen. And he just had a lot of confidence. So I kind of drew off that. And yeah, when everything started flowing, like, I, I just, I understood what he was saying. He kind of could tell that, you know, with the right, I've been, I've been putting in a lot of work. I'm going to be ready for it based off the work I put in. He's seen the work I put in in the summertime. I probably, I don't think anyone worked harder than me in my opinion. And I just, you know, went out there and tried to prove it. Same thing, same thing the summer after that. So his confidence in you translated into your confidence growing. For sure. It definitely helped. I mean, I, I, I think confidence, confidence only, uh, you know, can take a hit if you just aren't aware of what's happening. And now that I've experienced the league a year and another year, I'm learning the different things, the different norms of the NBA that kind of helped me settle down and really dial in and focus on the game. And, um, yeah, you know, when you do anything a little bit more, it's comfort. So, Jay, who was that for you that, that had that confidence in you, that believed in you, and then that translated into your confidence? Ooh, man, let me see. Uh, 
I said my my family I had uh the older brothers who uh who played the game. Uh, they always talk about how talented they were. Although they didn't, I, I went a little further in the game than they did, but they were pretty good players. You know, you run into those guys that were. Uh, you mentioned New Orleans, so I mean, I played with uh, my older brothers were talented players, high school, and some of them played a little college ball. But you can't tell them that they weren't superstars when they were playing. Right, That's a motivation for me. You know, I had to be at least better than them. At, or go on a when I got on a bigger stage, which was Georgetown at the time, I must, you know, put on a good show, you know, and uh, they were my motivation uh, at the time. And I just continued, I continued that throughout my career, as you know, uh, as a journeyman, you know, and it, you got to go out and try to, you know, get a job. That was the mindset of guys back in the day. You got to yeah. go out for a job. We coming from, NBA, CBA at the time. Now yeah, you got talking about that CBA. You got all that stuff. Yeah, you know, you, you know, but now you got the G League. Well, I was one of those guys. So uh those those I think it was New Orleans, my folks, the grind of uh <laughs> you know, of all your folks back home trying to prove yourself that I can make it out here. So they prepared me for the moment uh of competing and now having won a, a world championship and now having a son to play in the NBA. It's incredible, man. So I give a little credit to all my folks back home in New Orleans. Shout out to the who that. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my saints, man. Look at that. That's, Come on now. Uh, <laughs> so when, when, when junior was, was younger, did you train him in basketball? Yes. No doubt. What was, what was that like? You know, like I would imagine, like any father, uh, they have a son that they, they think that can be a good athlete. Or you want to put them in the sports. Uh, you want to you want to figure out it's when can you do it? What's the yeah. soon, how soon can you have your son or daughter? My my I mean, uh, or daughter to play? Uh, and I must I, I must have put the ball in his hand as soon as soon as he was able to stand up uh, and. He had a, and I started training from the, from the beginning, man. Uh, but I still remember as like a seven years old, seven, eight years old, having his first basketball goal in the, in the, in the driveway. And this kid knew how to, he had a knack for putting the ball in the basket with either hand. And it, 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 it didn't matter, you know, uh, the type of correct form and all that stuff. I wasn't with that. I was with, can you put it in the basket or not? And at an early age, he was able to do that. Throw the ball up to the goal just with any hand or just, and it went in. And so yeah. I tapped into his strengths. And I've used, that's been my motto as a coach, even to this day, tap into the young person's strengths and enhance those strengths. And that's been my mindset towards his development. And it's been that way through grade school and and now, and he's just blossomed into what we see now as a premier young big in the NBA with the Memphis Grizzlies. So it's been awesome. So, Junior, what was it like having, you know, your pops, who's also your coach and your trainer? What, what was that like? I mean, it was dope. I just think we, we were play a lot of one-on-one -on -one back then uh, mm -hmm. at the end of workouts. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he we shot a lot of threes always, so – I mean, we didn't know the game was going to go that way when everybody wants to shoot threes now. So I think it's just coincidence that I, I was always shooting threes at a young age just to have it in my bag. And now I'm able to show it like on the big stage. I'm able to shoot threes now. So I'm, I definitely am glad I started early. <laughs> what, when was the when was that time when you you finally beat him? Do you remember that game? I think we have it on. We have it on tape. I mean, not, uh, we have it on right, the iPad he, he somewhere. Tried to, uh, <laughs> he tried to. He tried to. Cheat. He no, tried I didn't. to cheat. No, <laughs> he tried to call a foul. And my mom, we had iPads, so my mom was recording the game. And then I looked at the iPad, like I went back and looked at it, and like right there, and I was like, "Nah, bro. Like I didn't touch you. Check ball, and then I won. Now I start talking a lot of trash for a while, like a long time, probably a couple of days." Like I was definitely talking trash because he always won. Like he just all <laughs> he always won games. Like I I could never win, and mm -hmm. 
It was very annoying. <laughs> Steve, I so knew. How did that feel when you when you won though? How did that feel? It was great. I mean, I, finally. Yeah, you, you know. Okay, great. Finally, <laughs> you know. But like, I definitely, I definitely was like, I needed bragging rights. So I was dope. I knew the day was gonna come, Steve, when uh, when your child ends up beating you, and yeah. it, you can't win anymore. You know, the day is coming. Will will come, and when it happened, uh, although he felt like you know he was feeling just great, finally winning games and beating me, uh, I man, I was I was so proud. Although I lost the game, I. I knew he was on his way to some great things in this game. And, yeah. uh, but you can't tell him right then and there, you know, you just, you see it. <laughs> and he just continued that. So now, nowadays I, I won't dare say let's play, you know, if I try to like, it's more, let's get some shots up, you know, shooting game or something like that, man. Come on. What about horse? What about horse? Can you still roll with him in horse? No, no, uh, he's not, he not rocking with me now, man. Don't he's hitting. I can't. I can't. I'm trying to shoot the little tweener. It's been a while. That, uh, I'm trying to shoot bank shots. Yeah, bank weird, tweeners. Weird yeah, at angles, hoping it it will affect his shot. But <laughs> hey, this dude hey, makes shots everywhere. Hey, that's when you know it's over when you're doing that. <laughs> he's trying to figure out ways. It ain't, it ain't gonna work. Uh, <laughs> it ain't gonna. Come work. on, man. horse. <laughs> that's all right. So, Long shot goes in, man. So the Jackson family, you guys are, are pretty unique uh, because basketball is like a family affair. Can you talk about how basketball has affected your family and just how it's kind of like a, a family business with you guys? You know, uh, it, it's it's been incredible, man, to see to see my son doing his thing in the game. Uh, of course, uh, many know about my history as a journeyman, but you're right. You know. Um, my, my wife is doing some great things in the game as well. As, as, the, as the head of the, the WNBA Players Association, she is, you know, she's making great strides and and doing the best for a lot of the, uh, a, a lot of women who are deserving of being able to showcase their game and play at a high level. And I'm so happy that she's 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 blossoming to an incredible executive as a as a as the head of the, uh, their union. So shout out to the WNBA and the players. Uh, I know the NBA is ready to come back to play, uh, hoping to come back, and uh, WNBA players will be coming back along with them. Uh, at least I hope, and uh, we can see. Some so you you're talking about your wife Terry Jackson, who was the first yeah. executive director of the WNBA. So that's that must you know give your family a lot of confidence, particularly when it comes to contract negotiations for your son, because you guys know the numbers, and I mean. You guys are kind of like royalty in basketball because there's nowhere that you haven't touched your dad with the championship. You know, now your son playing now, your wife uh, with the WNBA side. So that's a very unique experience for we for love a family. Dog. <laughs> yeah. We love yep. We love it at all levels. Man. We love it at all levels, man. From grade school hoops, grassroots, college, pros, women, men. Uh, girls, there's nothing else. Was that? Can there's, I say girls there's, and women? There's nothing else. He's about to go uh, on a whole else. like list. Of, <laughs> we love hoops, man. You know, we are we all hoopers, right? <laughs> so, so, Junior, I noticed you do a lot of um community service stuff with girls in particular. I know you've been doing some um workouts, and uh, and and when we were allowed to not socially distance, you would have camps. So, how is your mom's influence? kind of affected the way you look at your community service and, and what you try to get back to the game? I mean, from – I always knew my purpose was to speak up for people who don't have a voice or don't who want more of a voice, who need more of a voice and whatnot. So I always cared about that. I always cared about working with the youth. And with my mom getting involved in stuff like she does, I kind of combined everything and had a, um all-girls symposium where I had – Girls teams come and play in a camp setting. Nike helped me. I had Asia Wilson there. So it, it was great. It was, it was unbelievable. I seen girls pass out when they saw Asia. Uh, like it, we ended up talking to them about a lot of many different things. You know, it just was an all around good experience for them to feel good, feel um, like they can pretty much do anything. It was very competitive. That's the 
the main thing I wanted to bring out of everybody was just competitive spirit. Everybody was playing hard. Everybody was uh, trying to win. Like anything we did, any drill, any any game we had, and yeah, it was great. I'm definitely I'm definitely glad I got to do it before all this happened. But I'm I'm that was amazing. So how are you able to you know kind of stay in shape and and keep that playing mindset with this layoff? Because I know that must be hard because you don't know when or if it's gonna come back. Yeah, I mean, uh, you got to run on the treadmill. You got to, I mean, some of my family, we take walks around the neighborhood or wherever, around the block sometimes, make sure you're social distancing in that kind of way. But uh, definitely, whenever you can, just get on the treadmill, get on the elliptical, lift weights. We have a bike here, too. There's a lot of different things. We have a whole weight room here, so it's pretty easy for us to kind of stay in tone. Basketball-wise, you just got to make sure – Literally work on your handles in the driveway, work on your handles in your house, wherever. Keep touching the ball. Keep making sure you're doing those sort of things. But, I mean, yeah, as soon as we can get on the court, I'll be great. And I'm going to be forever grateful. Hey, hey I, know, I know he misses being on the court. But uh, I, I remind him that, uh, you know, a jump shot is like riding a bicycle. It, it, you'll never know how to do it. It will always – it will be there. I know you need a yeah. little bit of pressure, you need to get on the court, but I'm not worried. It's going to go in even when you get back on the court, and the day will come. As long as you stay in relatively you know, some decent shape, you'll be Every, okay. Everything's cool. Trust me. Everything. <laughs> there, there's that There's that pop confidence we're talking about right there. Yeah, man. You can't can't get down on yourself. It's it's Everybody's taking a hit, so it is what it is. All right. So I just wanted to chime in with a, a viewer question before we wrap up, but uh, I also didn't want this episode to end without talking a little bit about the changes in fashion in the NBA between your two generations. So me and Jaron Jr., it's kind of like every time you guys walk into an arena now, it's a fashion show. Um, you got to come looking correct and you have to have stuff being you know, put a certain way. You have to accessorize. Make sure your your gear bag is uh, is designer. Um, and so far, you've you've been killing the game mm. on this side. Like yeah. you're really <laughs> to go to work to play basketball. I mean, yeah, you gotta embrace the whole thing. Like, there's no reason, like, to not to not look good when you're going to do your job or when you're going to handle. I mean, like this? I mean, <laughs> that dude is sharp. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely. Back then, they had to wear like suits, I think, like a bunch of weird stuff. Like, just, that wasn't weird, man. We it's not nice weird, suit. but like, it's, it's nice just, you know, it's whatever. I, I kind of like to, you express yourself with your, with your clothing. It's something that, you know, I like doing. I like wearing stuff that makes people like wonder just get upset or say something like I like I like that reaction is funny because at the end of the day I'm just I'm just having fun but yeah definitely definitely should wear wear a nice fit to your job man you gotta go take care of business <laughs> yep um and I'm sure it helps uh on the branding side and so what Steven was talking about and you're you're just laying it up for a future modeling career man <laughs> that's what you're doing <laughs> not, not a not a question not <laughs> drip, drip, your yeah, yeah, drip. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. All right, so uh, this is I a wanna... viewer question that comes from Facebook. We would like to know if you guys had a chance to play against another father son NBA duo, two on two, or I'm going to interject since you guys have such a strong WNBA connection, if it was a mother son duo or any type of familial NBA WNBA <laughs> duo. Who would you guys play in two on two on two? And I'm gonna up the ante. Who would win? Mm. I'll let you answer that, man. I'm trying to think. Well, I'd want to see the Tim Hardaway, and you know that that, mm. but that'd be kind of hard for Pops to guard that crossover, though. Crossover. He, could, he could guard that. Uh, I I like uh, my guy Gary Gary Trent. I've known him for a minute, and his dad. So that 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 would be interesting. I don't know if if, if Pops could handle that Debo. Pop yeah, that, 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 I don't know, man. Look, That's a lot. I'm trying to think. Um, ooh, who do you know, dude? 
Think uh, about Father, it. Father, son, let me see. Right uh, I, my mind's going blank right now. Oh, and, but hold up. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Just a bonus, but you know that's a lot of that's a lot of beef down the block too. Uh, you know what? Uh, how about my man uh, Harvey Grant and his son Jeremy? Uh, yeah, uh, a few sons that have played in the league, and uh, you know, so we'll have fun with those guys, man. It'd be uh, it'd be a lot of little, little trash talking here and there, but I think everybody on in the family can shoot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to stay up. You can't help too much, right? <laughs> uh, be oh, good. Uh, well, I mean, shoot. Zaire Wade might be on that in a Wade. little bit. When when Z when Z get to the league, when he gets to the league, he's younger than me now. But when he gets to the league, I want that him. Okay. D Wade, you already know. D Wade, that'd be that'd be fun. You know that's what? My, was, my, what about Bronny and and Bron Bron? What about that one? Oh yeah, for sure them too. But I I know I know I know uh like Z Z more. I just been I've been okay. around. So it would be we'd be more bragging rights. <laughs> right. Shall I look? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Curry's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Thompson's. Those guys. Yeah, my, but you know, man, Michael Thompson, that's still a lot of beef down on the block and clay. You, you know, make, the jumpers. You make shots, you Mike, make shots we, man. We give it, we give uh, uh, Daddy Thompson that jumper nowadays. We're going to give him that. We got to help right. on his son. Got to help <laughs> out on clay, man. <laughs> Well, speaking of um, fashion, who 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 inspired the the Diddy White all fashion between you two? You know, y'all came in here correct. You know, I had, this shirt, I had this shirt and I was like, all right, like go. What do you? I told him to go put on whatever, and then like comes down with this on. And I'm like, all right, man. I, I didn't know you was about to do this, but go ahead, wear it. I didn't know. You I didn't know you was about to wear it. I just wanted like, some, you know, some some. I mean, it's the daytime. I don't know. It's, Nice outside. It's, it's all right. Chocolate, getting warm. Cho- chocolate look good in white sometimes, man. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Chocolate look good. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. Ah. It's the guy with all the fashion, man. The guy. Ah, his his fashion game has stepped up. Man. Yo, I'm funny, man. <laughs> I swear. I love it. I swear. So how, how have you helped your dad with his fashion? You, you try to help him out at all? or Because, or, or, you know, your dad, we used to rock the big suits with the, I mean, there was, I look at some of my pictures from when we played and all these big suits and my first couple of years with ESPN, finally I had to get me some, you know, tailored fitted suits. But man, we were killing the the big shoots that you, we could parachute off planes with our shoots. They were so big. Chief, Chief has good suits. Chief has good suits upstairs. Chief has, he has some good fits, like some good sweatsuits now. I, I think it kind of, that's where it kind of ends though. Like there's no, <laughs> you, wow. don't, you don't need all the rest of that. Like there's a whole. He, I, I think he's been, he's going to go through my wardrobe and eliminate some ain't stuff. Ain't no need you know? for all that, man. When I'm like, when I'm like old <laughs> dad in my, whatever, in my ways, I'm probably just going to be. Nah, I'm lying. I'm probably still going to be. Steve, uh, uh, what's up with these jogger pants, man? I mean, they're, 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 they're they're hurting me, man. I, I look, I, I'm trying, you know. Uh, I'm trying, man. You know, and then and you know, I don't want to be accused of wearing uh, high waters, as they say back in the day, or uh, ankle, br- whatever, you know. Lighting, they, yeah. Well, that's what they wear now. So I gotta kind of get with the program, I guess. I don't know. Help me out, son, with the uh, with the wardrobe, and maybe. But he's, he's, he's got I a good style. I've worn the craziest stuff, man. People, people all the time will tell me, man, what are you wearing? You guys like, pretty edgy, man. Like, bro, I don't. I mean, I don't care, bro. If you say something about it, then obviously I did what I was supposed to do. Well, guys, I want to thank both of you for your time. I'm honored to interview both of you. Great seeing my dude, Jaron Senior. I, I see you on the road in the future, and um, Jaron Junior. Good luck in your career, and and you know, keeping in shape and all that stuff, and. Uh, you know, try not to, you know, get in too many battles on those Uno games because I know how competitive your dad can be. Um, so that's it for today's episode of Legends Live. Jaron Sr. and Jaron Jr., thank you so much for being our guest. To all those watching, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to check out legendsofbasketball.com slash legendslive for a video gallery of previously recorded episodes. We hope you'll join Legends Live on Tuesday for the next episode with legend and former NBA coach Kenny Gaddison and Hall of Fame coach 
John Keller Perry. Until then, take care, stay safe, wash your hands, and stay home, everybody. Much required. <laughs>